the purpose of fasting in the month of Ramadan is to achieve taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqu. Fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for the people who were before you that you may achieve taqwa. And before I continue on the discussion of the taqwa, and I would like to give you and remind myself of practical steps to achieve taqwa. I would like to ask the question, what is the original word for the word taqwa? Anyone know? Muttaqi? Okay. Any other? Fear Allah. Okay. Very good. MashaAllah. All right. Technically speaking, the word taqwa is derived from the verb waqa. Waqa means protected to protect. And the original word for taqwa is waqwa. Can you say it? Waqwa. Waqwa. Right? And why is it taqwa instead of waqwa? Because waqwa is not easy to pronounce. To pronounce. So the wow is replaced with ta. So it is taqwa. Okay? This is how the origin. What does it mean? It means to protect oneself from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is a hadith where a Sayyida Aisha was visited by a woman with two daughters. And the woman was asking and begging for some food. Sayyida Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, the wife of the Prophet وسلم, she had only three dates in her possession. Believe this or not. I mean, if you have three dates only, you will probably have depression. You will be worried about what you have in the future. But the wife of the Prophet وسلم, had only in her uh, uh, home three dates. She gave her the three dates. So she gave one to one girl, another to another girl, and she uh, uh, broke the third one to eat it, and then the two girls had already finished their dates early, quickly. They were hungry, and they extended their hand to their mother. So the mother divided it into two halves and gave each one one half. Sayyidah Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, being amazed from what happened, she told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa To come to another, uh, uh, so the Prophet sallallahu said, the one who cares about two, any of these girls and discipline them and raises them in good manner until uh, they are married without being beaten, without being scolded, without being mistreated, Allah will enter him into paradise. However, in another hadith, the Prophet وسلم, to show you how important this half date is, the Prophet وسلم, said, in the day of judgment, the person will be brought into uh, 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 accounting. And he will look to his right and he will find only his deeds. He will look into his left, he will find only his deeds. And he will look in front of him, and he will find only the fire. If, it, if you want me to stand, I can stand. Yeah. Then Rasulullah said, فَتَّقُنَّا Protect yourself against the fire, even with half of a day. So what I want you to know is that nothing good you do will go in vain. 
That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى The one who does the least of good deeds will certainly see it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that it's not only that you will get back your reward for the good deeds, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will even multiply your good deeds. In Allah la yazlimu mithqala dharra. Allah will not wrong you in the least possible way. Wa in taku hasanatan yuba'ifha wa yu'ti min ladunhu ajran azima. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't wrong you in a little bit. However, if you do one good deed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply it and will give a great reward from him. And speaking of sadaqah tonight, since you were reminded of sadaqah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْخُذُ الصَّدَقَةَ مِنْ أَحَدِكُمْ بِيَمِينَهِ Allah takes the sadaqah that you give with his right hand from each one of you. فَيُرَبِّيهَا لِأَحَدِكُمْ كَمَا يُرَبِّي أَحَدُكُمْ فَلُوَّهُ أَوْ بَعِيرَهُ And Allah will grow it for you. Like you grow your little horse, little baby horse, how much care you would give to grow that horse. Or how much care you would give to grow a little camel. Hatta in lukma, one little bite of food will become as huge, as great as the mountain of Uhud. You see? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you do one wrong deed, one wrong deed, either it will count against you as one wrong deed or will be forgiven. But if you get if you do one good deed, it may multiply for you until it becomes one <laughs> bite of food becomes like the mountain of Uhud. And you know, here is one thing. I mean, we are all hopeful to enter the Jannah, right? We hope. What will you get in the Jannah? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَنَّةِ La shajara in the in paradise the tree yamurru rakibu fi ha mi'ata amin ma yaqta'uha you will ride under a tree 100 years in the worriedly major major distances you will not finish it Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says إِنِّي لَأَعْلَمُ آخِرَ أَهْلِ النَّارِ خُرُوجًا مِنَ النَّارِ وَآخِرَ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ دُخُولًا مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم is speaking of the last one to come out of the fire. Who, who, was, who is the last one to come out of the fire? I'm, I'm asking, I'm asking and I'll take this for an answer. Okay. Who is the last one who would get out of the fire? Don't think that because uh, you have ended the recitation of the Quran, I'm not going to quiz you. First of all, the one who has the least weight, the little ant's weight of Iman in his heart, will come out of the fire. No one will stay in the fire if he has the least weight of Iman. And Rasulullah in this hadith said that this man will appeal to Allah and praise to Allah. Oh Allah, take, my, take me uh, out from the, the, the bottom of the fire to the surface. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will ask him to pledge that if Allah fulfills his request, that he would not ask Allah for anything after that.